Hi, everybody. Welcome to another menopause.com podcast. You know, we've all been hearing a lot about AI, some stuff that's very scary, some that's not. But we know it's going to be changing the world more than we can even imagine. Uh, but a few of us have yet to find ways of applying it to our real lives. So it still feels a lot like science fiction. Well, today's guest, our very own Mano mentor, Mark Fournier, three-time Emmy Award-winning filmmaker, psychotherapist, and life mastery coach, has once again done something remarkable. Mark has now invented OmniCoach, as you can see behind his uh, figure there. Uh, it's yeah. the world's first 100% AI-driven virtual life and business coaching app. Yes, and Larry and I have been using this free app and... So, Mark, why don't you tell us about the OmniCoach app and tell us why you invented it? Well, thank you. Thanks. And hey, good morning, Larry and Mike. Always good to be on the show with you. <laughs> good morning. Good morning. Um, and it is an early morning. Yeah. Yes, that's true. We got a, got a head start on the rest of the yes. world yes. On, on a Monday. So, uh, so OmniCoach, obviously, it's an app. We're all getting used to apps. Uh, apps are... Uh, just programs that you can download on usually your phone that give you quick and easy access to uh, to, a, to tools. It's a simple tool that you literally type in. You go to your app store, type in OmniCoach. It's one word. And up comes this uh, option to uh, uh, use the phone to use it in the way you would if you had a full-time life and business coach in your pocket that you could carry everywhere you went. So it's uh, literally something that you can ask any question about anything to do with life, about uh, if you're having problems at, at home in your marriage, if you're having problems with your kids and parenting, so relationships, parenting, and business. Uh, how should I invest my money? How should I, uh, I don't know where to live. How can I figure out the best place to move? And anything that where if you had some brilliant sage, the smartest person in the world, the most knowledgeable, experienced person who has ever lived following you around all day, what would that be like? What would you ask? And and so the reason for creating it is with 8 billion people on this planet, um, and I can't coach them all, um, but you know, my coaching comes in three basic parts. I uh, My primary coaching is with uh, high net worth entrepreneurs, uh, executives, leaders, and uh, so Mike and I are out. Or, we, so, yeah. get, get near Mike then. <laughs> right. Uh, and that's great. So yeah, no, no, you guys would be just perfect. <laughs> but those are the individuals, but I only coach 10 because it just takes too much bandwidth. I coach five on, on one day and five on the next, and that's it. Otherwise, I can't keep track of their lives on the level that I'd like. And so then I do this group coaching where I coach a little, little bit larger audiences and then I have tools that I share with the rest of the world, um, but they're mostly ways of supplementing your life. And, and so for 30 years, I've been asking myself, how can I provide the entire planet? When I first came up with this, there weren't 8, million, 8 billion people, it was probably five or six. And, uh, and I kept thinking there's gotta be a way to access all of the information, all the knowledge that has ever been gained, ever been, we'll say, published to the internet, uh, that that has been ever been accumulated, and what if the world had access to that, like they do in a Google search, for instance? Only it was all designed specifically to answer the questions of your life, and they could have instant access to it, no matter where they were, no matter how much money they had. What if I could make that free? Um, uh, I could provide them with with something that could help them build better lives, uh, keep people from committing suicide, help people uh, make better choices in all the areas of their life. And uh, so that was the purpose. It was an al altruistic motive. And in fact, I created it through my my nonprofit, Do Good. Nice, nice. And, and we do good by helping others do good. And so how do I do good? It's by helping others become more enlightened, empowered, and self-actualized through access to this kind of information. So let me let me interrupt you for a minute and, and ask you a question about, uh, you know, 
our, uh, I, I think most people, including the people who are listening to this or watching it, uh, have a, uh, a certain opinion about AI, artificial intelligence, right? Uh -huh. And most of the stuff that we're reading about right now, it sounds a little scary. I mean, we all remember Skynet from the Terminator and, and all this kind of thing where eventually um, machines or, or programs become self-aware to the point where they realize, you know, I don't really need these, you know, bag of bones, right? I can do things faster and better. So, you know, that, that's a concern, but a, a, a more uh, uh, local concern would be, um, we know, for instance, that uh, Alexa and, and your iPhone and everything are watching you all the time, right? So you, we might have a discussion about, uh, you know, whatever, Nike shoes. And next thing we know, there's Nike ads all over our, uh, our feeds on, on, uh, when, we, when we go on our computers. So my issue would be, what if somebody's asking questions to this app which is kind of exposing information about them that they would normally share with, say, a, a leadership person or a psychiatrist or whatever that we know is confidential. Uh, how do how do they know that this app is not, in some way, making that information known, which could potentially be used in nefarious ways? If somebody's suicidal, if somebody is having an affair, or so, right? How do how do we know? But that could not in some way be turned against them. Yeah. That would yeah. be a great question, by the way. <laughs> it's a, it is. Yeah. Larry, that's one of the things I love about you. You, uh, you, <laughs> you, you. you cut to the chase and you look for the elephant in the room and say, let's climb on that thing. <laughs> and so, yes, here, of course, I've created this wonderful way of creating a better world. And there is, the, and invariably, I'm always asked, yeah, but what about that dark shed? There's, you know, there's, right. there's, uh, isn't AI going to take over the world? Isn't AI going to, you know, isn't it going to do something terrible? We, would they be telling us we should stop AI? We should, we should stop it before it does some horrible, terrible thing. And, um, and, and so I kind of want to answer your question in two parts. One is to look at AI in general. Um, so AI, new technology, uh, exponen exponentially beyond some of the things that we've been developing, and it can impact all of mankind. And not that I was prepared for your question. However, <laughs> I've been doing this for a very long time. In the book, A Thousand Years, A Thousand People, for example, it talks about the thousand most influential human beings in the last thousand years. And it's got some pretty amazing people from Christopher Columbus and Martin Luther and Galileo and William Shakespeare and Isaac Newton, uh, Charles Darwin, any of these five sound familiar? Uh, Leonardo da Vinci. I mean, some pretty big hitters, right? Never heard of them, but never, yeah. Yeah. I'm sure they were important at some point. Albert Einstein, yeah, yeah, on and on it goes. And guess who's at the very top of that list? The top arc of Orient. Yeah, <laughs> that's the next edition. So, <laughs> about a thousand names in the last thousand years, top of the list of all these brilliant luminaries, and I mean, it goes on and on, is Johann Gutenberg. Okay. Can you tell me who, who Johann Gutenberg is? He went to the printing press. That's right. You yep. boys have done your, you went to college and everything, didn't you? <laughs> Invented the printing <laughs> press. I'd like to not answer any of these questions. That's the only uh, thing I learned in college, by the way. But you know, oh, whenever. that's funny. And you learned it on a book that was made possible because of Gutenberg. And yeah. so when it came out, they said this would destroy mankind as we know it. This would ruin everything because it would take knowledge from the hands of this tiny little group of of, of experts and monks and and so on, and put it in the hands of the proletariat of. of the bourgeois, the, any, uh, the, uh, anyone would have access to knowledge. And how could you control the world if they have access to everything, if they know what's really happening? This would be a disaster. They really saw it as like the end of civilization and the end of being able to control hu human beings. And since then, of course, it turned out that um, the written word 
Uh, yes, it has been used in, in nefarious ways, but it's been used in some pretty darn good ways too. Ended up being making him the number one most influential person in the world. Um, this has, and so that was a technology. That was a new technology at the time. Now, fast forward to the internet. When that first came out, people were saying the same thing. Oh my gosh, if this gets out, we won't be able to control it. The World Wide Web, it will, it could be used for all sorts of horrible things. People will be able to do things that, you know, they could never do before behind the government's back and so on. And, uh, what, 30 years later, probably about the same time that I started creating uh, Omnicoats, the original version. They're doing all of that. We found just like the book. They use it right. to do some not so good things and a lot of really cool things. A lot, lot, of, lot of not so good things, though. And yeah, there's plenty of it. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and it, don't it, forget the reason that the internet even took off. We have to thank the one industry that really made it financially viable. Porn. That is pornography, right? Yeah. Yeah. That's also <laughs> why. You know that? Why? I know that because what else was there to do on the internet back then, right? Yes, it's, a, okay. it's also why uh, home video took off. Uh, in fact, remember when there was VHS and beta and they couldn't yeah. tell which one? You know how they decided? They went to the porn industry and said, which one do your people use? <laughs> there was VHS, they threw out beta and that was the decider. Yeah, so yeah. apparently the sex thing has been going on for a long time. Whatever that is. <laughs> Whatever well, that I is. I have a question, Mark. I have a question. Okay, and just know I haven't answered his question yet, but go ahead. Well, oh, no, no, go ahead. I, you know, we, we, we need to, you know, the, we need to keep this down to an hour. Um, and so go ahead, you answer the question, and then I'm going to jump in with another one. Okay? All right. Go ahead. Okay. So, his question. And if question. you don't keep your answers shorter, Mike's going to open that gate and let that lion out. So uh, right. well, actually, I'm glad you mentioned that, Larry, because the truth is I'm actually in the cage. The lion is free. We oh. thank Free Leo the Lion because we don't like trophy hunters and we love wildlife and we wow. want to protect them. So this is a statement on that. I'm in the cage. He's out. Nice. 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 All right. I Anyways, you love that. Clear that up. Back to AI. Okay. It's, it's, uh, I, I love it. I love the uh, uh, paradigm shifts. And it, perhaps uh, we'll have a paradigm shift or two today. So, so to shorten my answer, I'll say, so beginning with the printing press, the technology, and then the internet, they can be used for good, for bad. Um, now that we, was Steve Gutenberg, right? Steve uh, Gutenberg? <laughs> yeah, the actor. Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you know, you and I saw him. You, you and I saw him at, uh, at, at, uh, at the pancake restaurant one day. I, I can't remember the name of it, but anyhow. Right. Long story short, in Hollywood. So, okay, so... Um, now comes along the internet or comes along AI and they're saying the exact same thing. This is, could be used for all sorts of terrible things. Um, it's again, the latest, greatest technology. And I'm saying, just connect the dots, just like the others. Yes, it can be used to do some dark things and it can be used to do some great things. And oh, by the way, it will be. So the question for us is always going to be the same thing. Do we eliminate anything that has the potential for doing something bad? Um, uh, and lose out on all the possible good things? Or do we do the best we can to make the most of it and, and, and jump on all the opportunities? I mean, look at human beings. Well, then we'd be wiped off the planet because the potential, we have the potential of doing bad things, but we have the potential of doing good things. If you've ever seen the movie um, uh, with, with uh, Keanu Reeve, uh, the day the earth stood still, and he comes to decide whether whether to wipe out mankind because we're like a virus. That was a remake, this. by the way. Pardon? That was a remake. Yes, of course it was. Yeah. So, But it's the one I thought most people would <laughs> be more likely to recall. But uh, yeah, and they decide to leave us, let, let us live because we do have the potential for doing good. So in this case, um, uh, AI technology, when they're saying we need to stop it, forget it. Look again, connect the dots. You can't stop it. It's, it's the cat has been let out of the bag. All you can do is put, make people go underground. You will not stop it. Uh, you know, I love the, the, the reasoning for uh, Elon Musk and all the, the great tech sages saying, we need to slow it down, we need to stop it, but it's too late. So now what do we do? We run and hide or we do what I did. We say, how can we use this? Do so many good things with it 
that it outweighs the bad and that we end up just like with the internet and the book saying, but it was worth it. Yes, yeah, some, some bad things happened, but it was worth it. So to answer your question, we did something unique. Um, Chat GPT, which is three and now going on four, is the driver behind most of the commercial applications. We're no exception, but we did not give, we did not connect you directly to Chat GPT. We built a firewall. We built our own servers, and our servers control how Chat GPT is used. Uh, they've got some built-in things to keep it. Um, from being used in nefarious ways. And they've been p putting a lot of effort into, uh, obviously they've been worried about this too, but then we put in um, ours on top of theirs. And that means for starters, your information can't get past us. It doesn't go to G chat. They don't have a clue who you are or what you are. So now the only thing that you're trusting is instead of trusting Mark Fournier, your psychotherapist, who's been doing this for 45 years, and I'm still in business, so apparently I don't share the information my clients share with me. And that exact same mindset, that exact same integrity has been built into OmniCoach, uh, a, a program that I have 100% control of. And uh, and as the architect, as the creator, developer of OmniCoach, it has the, I, the same integrity that I have as a psychotherapist and somebody who's here to listen and, and give you meaningful feedback. So is there any trust involved? Yes, but the trust doesn't go any further than the same trust that you would give to a therapist or uh, somebody that uh, th that you have shared uh, insights plastic with before. Surgeon. Pardon? A plastic surgeon. A plastic or your plastic surgery. surgeon. Exactly. Exactly. Did you use... Have I got that? stories to tell you. Oh, yeah. <laughs> but you'd only tell me. So, <laughs> right. so, you know, whether they went with 200 centimeters or 300, it's you know, <laughs> only your plastic surgeon will know, knows for sure. So yeah, so so that, that, anyhow, does that help knowing that that there we have walls built in, doesn't yes. go past our platforms, and of course we have all sorts of protection. You can't hack into the systems. I've got some pretty smart programmers always staying ahead of that issue. But I, I love that you asked it, and and thank you. So yeah, Mike. Thanks for trying to nail him, Larry. That was brilliant. I love it. Um, we can always count on you to just dig. Um, uh, elephant. So, listen, guys our age, guys our age, you know, I'm 49, Larry's 79, and you're in between, Mark. Uh, we're afraid of this kind of change. Uh, but, you know, like you said, you can't stop it. So what do we do? Um, you know, it, it, let's just say a, a business owner has, you know, 80 employees. And they want their employees to start using this to learn, to uh, help them through their day. How would how would an employer uh, tell their employees how to use this system for work? Yeah, great idea, great question. Um, so imagine that you simply you let the team know, hey, we've got this new app that's going to help you uh, navigate your through your life. Uh, personal business doesn't matter. Uh, it's it's not just a search engine. It's designed specifically to help you get the answers to just about anything you can think of, and 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 it's free. And we'd love to share this with you, and we'd love uh, to encourage you to use this to help you make better choices and uh, and to create a happier, more fulfilling life. And ideally, you would simply, I, I mean, because it's so easy to use. Again, you just type in Omni Coach. One word on your app, it comes up and it's like, let's get started. What do you want to know? And so um, you just get them to start. And at first, what we found is people start just because it's a novelty. And it's like, whoa, check this out. And we have some other things that hopefully we'll have time to touch on. The fact that you can either ask OmniCoach, which is the, the aggregate of all of knowledge combined, um, broken, uh, funneled into a singularity. What would it every single one of the greatest minds of all time, what would they all agree on? Now that's an answer no single human being has got the bandwidth to, to provide. So it is theoretically would be the most brilliant answer you'll ever get. But you can also ask an individual. You could ask Einstein or Jesus or Edison or uh, Mike Esrig, Larry, right. you could ask, or you could ask Gandalf the Grey. 
Uh, we've designed it so you can have fun with it too. And so anything you can do as an employer to get them engaged, get them using it right. is usually how it gets started. And at some point they start to get, re start realizing, holy cow, this could save my marriage. This could get my, help me get my kids off drugs. This could help me, you know, figure out the answers to every question I've ever had about how it, creating a better life and career. You just have you, to get you have started. A tutorial for this, I mean, it, on your website, are you have that already, right? You, you we, show we, that, or we're actually, uh, we're we're at, we're actually creating one, but we haven't been in a hurry because it's so simple. It's like giving you a tutorial on how to use the toilet. You know, you sit, you flush, you you. you, okay, you okay, but, all right, hold on, hold on for a second. So you ask Google, you ask Google a question, right? And Google gives you a list of a million answers and you got to scroll through it and you got to do all of that. Yeah. Yours, I guess, cuts right to it and gives you one answer? Yes. No, no. Ours, ours like searches, our searches like Google, um, but with the chat, I, with, but with chat GPT, the AI, it searches everything in, in, in milliseconds. And then it compares all of their answers and then it, it, it finds out that of uh, the 10,000 answers out there, that there's all of these, the most brilliant people who have the most feeds, who have the greatest, uh, who are the most respected or, you know, the links and so on. And then it starts to go down from that until it finally finds out, well, you know what? The no largest percentage of them would say this. And then it takes that and it breaks it down into a very brief, like a one, um, you, you almost, rarely even have to scroll answer and um behind the scenes i've programmed it so that it'll not only answer your question but then it follows by saying because it is a coach by saying and these are the steps and the following you can take the following steps to better understand and apply these answers to your life and so it's not just information it's also and here's how you can use the information step one do this every day step two do this every day and so that it it's a pretty legit coach uh, coaching uh, st structure. Mm -hmm. So do you see this more as a supplement? So, for instance, one of the things uh, when you go for counseling or coaching or whatever, one of the major components is is if you don't have somebody who's a good listener, it's probably not going to be a good experience, right? Because it's not all about going to somebody and saying. You know, tell me what the fuck's wrong with my life, right? What that's not what it's about. It's about spewing, getting stuff off your chest, having somebody in a non judgmental way listening to what you're saying. Because at that point, you're not interested in feedback. You just want to unload on somebody you can trust, right? And then that's when the interaction starts. So, like in between sessions. So, let's say, Let's say typically people see uh, uh, somebody like you maybe twice a month or something, right? And once a week. Once a week. Uh, in between, it's almost like this is like homework maybe, right? Where you can say, look, you're going to be having all these questions. I want you to use this and start getting some insight into some of the questions that you're asking. And then when you come in, we can discuss this even deeper one-on-one. -on -one. Is, is that something that you see as, as a viable option for this as well? Yes, absolutely. Just, Larry, I love that, that you're seeing that this is something that can be used in a multitude of ways. Uh, there will be, uh, uh, first of all, my housekeeper says she's a life coach. My landscaper says he's a life coach, you know, okay? So right. basically people have gotten the idea that all they have to do is give advice. And what's right. advice based right. on their personal life experience? Right. It's a pretty yes. limited right. feedback. Yeah. And so what this will do, because people have asked, uh, are you going to put coaches out of business? I mean, I mean, how, how far can this thing uh, go? And, and the way it will actually work is you can, it can replace those who have no business giving personal advice and causing more trouble than they're helping. Uh, those people, just like when the uh, in the in the big 2008 real estate boom, uh, I mean bust. Um, by 2010, something like 75 or 80 percent of all the mortgage brokers and realtors were out of business. 
because these were people who were just, uh, they're just hobbyists. They didn't really have their job right. down. They didn't really know what they were doing. But the ones who were the experts and the pros, they stayed in business and then flourished and became, and they up, they leveled up the entire industry. Now it was, you've got to be an expert if you want to not only get in this business, but survive. So this will, uh, uh, people have been referring to this as, uh, as a disruptive program and a game changer, and it, and it will be in some capacity. It will not put coaches out of business, except the ones who don't have any business being in this field. Uh, but the rest of them, well, for one, they'll use the tool themselves. I could literally be coaching with you since most of the coaching is just over the phone. They don't see what you're doing. You could ask me a question. I could literally hold the phone up to the, uh, the, the phone up to the phone, the, the, my phone. I mean, I could literally be listening to your question and hit search. And within five seconds, OmniCoach has given the br most brilliant answer that I could ever, ever give you. And I can literally say, well, here's what I need you to do. Now it's not advice. Now it has become a device to help the coach give better, more powerful feedback. It sounds like the Wizard of Oz where the curtain got pulled back and there's yeah. the, and the levers around and, and they're not like, oh, doing much of anything. Well, and then there will be uh, those who just go straight to OmniCoach get yeah. the answers for themselves. But you mentioned something really important. Coaches play different roles. Uh, one role is to provide useful, powerful, meaningful advice, we can call it. They can't touch this. I can't touch this. I created a device that's smarter than me. And, but that doesn't mean that they can't still, that they don't still have a role because we all know what an accountability coach is. That's the person who, in, if you're working out, it's the guy who bangs on your door at six in the morning and says, get your ass out of bed, we're going for a run. And the one who calls you at halfway through the week and says, hey, how, how are your assignments going? So, right. so those people still have a, have a role. Um, they can focus more on doing what they do best, which is being the shoulder to cry on, okay? I mean, that has value, uh, but, it's, but it's not really... The, you know, the ultimate coaching isn't just being somebody for somebody to, to have a shoulder to cry on. Uh, you know, we have, uh, that's what, you know, our, our, our drunk buddies at the bar are for, right? That's what bartenders are for. Right. <laughs> you know, all right, I'll have another drink. And oh my God, did I tell you? So, so you'll have those people throughout your life, I hope. I hope you have friends that you can share your issues with, but your friends aren't, can't compete with this. Your friends are doing the best they can to give you feedback that's hopefully useful. But again, it's one insight from one guy who had a really bad experience, and he's going to say, "Leave the bitch, I, you know, get out, get out," because he happened to have a bad wife, and it's not going to suggest anything about, well, have you tried these five steps to keep your marriage strong? So then, so that's the way it's going. Why it's not going to put them out of business? The coaches will start using it more. Um, and people simply use coaches in a different capacity, not for as much for advice as for support and for that accountability. So you, you mentioned uh, asking famous people a, a question, right? Well, if you ask The Rock about something that he would have nothing to do with, he would not have any knowledge of, let's say, construction, right? You ask a construction question, but you wanted the opinion of The Rock, how would that come out? Yeah, so so what? Uh, great questions. I love. I just love working with you guys. You never ask the same question that anybody else ever asks. <laughs> the Rock. So so what what's happening? As it's shifting from Chat GPT three to four, it's getting more and more clever. But what it does right now, you know, this we've been working day and night on this thing for ages. Um, is it goes out to the internet. It will find everything that has ever been written by The Rock and everything he has ever said. It will create a profile in seconds. This is, this is what Dwayne Johnson, what he feels about life, his, his various characters, the ones he chooses, and it will literally get a sense of who Dwayne Johnson is and how he feels about things. I mean, if he does he lean to the left, to the right? And it will ask figure out what would he probably say. And of course it says Dwayne Johnson would most likely, 
but probably right, right. because we want you to know this is a simulation and besides and because i don't want to be sued so <laughs> right and in in that case it would say um something like dwayne johnson um has uh dwayne johnson does not appear to have uh, been in, ex, uh, have any experience in, in the construction field has never uh, you know never shown any interest or any blah blah blah. It'll say that he's probably not going to have really great information. However, and then it will divert to OmniCoach and it will still give you a in the big, movie Skyscraper. He knew all about right. the security. Okay, of the, and it and made very well and right. jumped into the building from a crane. And then realized that even though the thing was on fire, it wasn't going to collapse. So there's some. You know what? And, and and actually, because we've had to do that sort of thing where it's found some obscure right. reference, and it may say, um, however, um, based on some of his uh, his movie <laughs> roles, he may have said, make sure that your that your building is structurally sound. The foundation is the most important thing, and that end. And so it does speculate. It even provides quotes. It may make reference to, uh, to you know his his wife and how she felt. But it keeps it short. And ultimately, though, because even though we know they may be asking about Dwayne Johnson for fun, we still want you to get some coaching. So after it says he either you know doesn't know jack shit about this, but he would you know. But if he did, he would probably. And then it will give you very salient, meaningful, useful. Omni coach feedback. So you always get something useful. Uh, but chat uh, uh, GPT 4 is learning how to um, extrapolate even further. It can take less and less information about somebody and come closer to wow. uh, giving you that answer. Amazing. And now, some of them are the right on. Go ahead. In the earthquake business that I uh, that I'm in, uh, he, The Rock knows all about earthquakes because he starred in San Andreas, okay? Yes, he did. Oh, it was a great role. Right Very realistic. Yeah. Yes, it was so <laughs> realistic. Uh, <laughs> so, um, so, so, you know, just to kind of wrap this up for people so they kind of know what we're talking I mean, there, there's Chat GPT, which I've used. I actually uh, was with a writer's group that I'm with. And they didn't believe that it could do what it allegedly can do. Yeah. So we asked it sort of a, a ridiculous question. We said, write a Shakespeare sonnet about sushi. sushi. Oh, yeah. And in, in literally, like you say, probably three to four seconds was a three paragraph uh, early Shakespearean sonnet. About An iambic pentameter. Yeah. Amazing, right? Yep. So it, it, it's fun to to play with with stuff like that, but but the more useful, I mean, that's more game stuff, right? Which is yeah, um, which, which is great, and you can do that on your uh, site as well. Oh yeah, you, you, you can, like I said, Gandalf the Gray, Candace yeah, Emmerdine. I mean, What's that? The Omni Coach game is coming out next week. <laughs> the more we have more, hands. The more important thing about your uh, app for people that we want to get across is that so far, you know, uh, we don't have to welcome our AI overlords yet. But what we do need to do is just realize, hey, it's a tool so right now that Mark has found a way to, to make useful in your everyday life. Uh, whether you have extreme stresses, you know, uh, suicidal ideations or, or divorce or whatever it might be, to just, hey, you know... Uh, I, I, I'm I'm feeling kind of inadequate in my job. What are some things I could do to get re-energized, right? So I mean, it, it can it can kind of give you answers uh, that you can use to your benefit uh, on more serious subjects than just writing a sonnet about sushi. I, I Larry, you could ask. Yeah, I'm feeling inadequate in bed. How do I? Well, first of all, you have to have a partner. Then it may work better. I can answer these questions already. I'm of course, it could say, send me a picture and I'll tell you why. Uh, <laughs> yeah. yeah. I'm not sending you a picture, Larry. <laughs> but again, I mean, I think there's a more serious use for this, which I think is great that you've captured that uh, for this. Yeah, program. that's why, obviously, half of my presentation is to say, listen, uh, you know, it's uh, AI is no better or any worse than the person using it. 
Uh, but we have another firewall, which I think is really important to put in there for those who are still concerned. I don't want OmniCoach telling me how to raise my kids or answering my daughter's question who's who's overwhelmed and depressed when she calls and says and, and asks how the best way of, uh, of committing suicide. I don't want to risk letting OmniCoach answer that question. It's too dangerous. Well, the way I got around it is you're not talking. Uh, yeah, I mean, I don't want AI doing that. You're not talking to AI. I intentionally created this platform as, uh, as, as a stopgap. You're talking to OmniCoach. OmniCoach is talking to ChatGPT. It then filters everything it says and puts it in a different context based on all of our programming and then answers your question. But best of all, what we're using uh, OmniCoach for is ChatGPT isn't answering a single one of your questions. Human beings are. All the humans who've ever lived, your question is being answered by Jesus and Socrates and Muhammad and and Homer and Epictetus and the greatest and, and Freud and uh, Carl Jung and all these brilliant minds. It's sifting through until it creates a singularity. And this answer came from human beings. So we have done that to make sure that no matter what AI is doing, you're actually not at jeopardy, uh, uh, in jeopardy of being misled by, uh, by an uh, artificial intelligence that doesn't know what the hell it's talking about. It's just being used to help us get the best answers from human beings. That to me makes, it's part of our patent, is one of the things that makes it so unique. Uh, because I, I mean, I'm, it's not that I don't trust AI, it's that I understand it. I understand that it's capable uh, of saying things that I don't want it to say. Uh, but, right. but, the, yeah. but, but I know what Plato would say, and he's cool. <laughs> well, and, and uh, you know, the, the, uh, careful about using the word singularity, because anybody who's ever read Ray Kurzweil's book, The Singularity is Near, that's a doomsday uh, yeah. word yeah. when it comes to AI. So uh, the idea that uh, they will eventually become more, uh, more useful, intelligent, and even maybe sentient to the point where they figure out they don't need us. But that's not what OmniCoach no. is. OmniCoach... Okay. Is a is an app that you can download for free, and, and then you can start asking questions either you know specifically with with famous people if you want an answer that way, or more serious stuff about hey how do I deal with this or what are the best ways to do this. Now tell us uh, so when somebody does that and they you have to log in I guess. Um, so what happens is is it free all the time? Can they ask endless number of questions or how does that work? Yeah, because people are saying, well, if it's free, how, how do you even stay in business? Right. Uh, and keeping in mind that this is all being done through my nonprofit because this is my way of saying, I want to make a difference. And I feel like you want to change the world. You need to elevate our mankind's level of consciousness. And so this is one way to help create a world with more enlightened, empowered, and self-actualized people by giving this, the, this kind of knowledge. And so um, it had to be free because, because most of the people who need it aren't people with PhDs and, uh, you know, and psych degrees from Stanford or whatever. It's, it's people who maybe make $20 a week. And I wanted them, if you have access to a phone, you've got access to all of the answers you could hope for. So the way we pay for it, because I have to pay chat GPT um, for every single question. So the way we is, uh, I just borrowed it from Pandora. Um, you, you like the music? Play Pandora. You don't want to pay anything? Every five new songs, a little ad pops up. And that ad is what keeps them in business. You don't want the ad? Pay nine bucks a month and for a prescription, uh, prescription and subscription, and, and you don't even have to listen to the ads. And so, right. so it's, I just took their, their, their business model. So you, you ask five questions, little ad pops up. Hit the X, it goes away, five more questions. And that was our way. But, you know, if it ever actually makes money, the money's all going to, to do good anyhow. And it just, right. and, and it will go to, to um, OmniCoach 2.0, which will be a full on camera video version of everything. You won't just read or hear the answers. You'll see that you'll see Einstein talking to you and his wow. mouth will be moving wow. and it'll be 
pretty badass. So it's like Mark Fournier meets, uh, you know, uh, uh, James Cameron. And, and cool. that's very expensive to create, but we're developing it. In the meantime, by the way, when you do ask a question, you don't even have to type it. You just talk. You can talk the question in and the answer pops right up. And and this, so, this and you can fascinating. Even, it's, yeah, it's amazing. Well, and you can that. even choose between whether you want Omni Coach mode, um, in which case um, your um, uh, I left it left it going too long, so <laughs> I have yeah. to rush it. Well, you're going to cut this in, right? I mean, you'll cut. Yeah, this in too. yeah. So so yeah. So I'll just hold the phone up, and then I will show you some different ways that you can use it. We'll ask different questions. And uh, if you want to leave me with any questions, I'll go ahead and do that offline and show you the answers. I think it's pretty, once you've seen how easy it is, it, it's, yeah. and, and again, it may start out just as something you do for fun. That's why I added fictitious characters because, and then that's sure enough, all my, my daughter, all her friends in college, they, that's where the Katniss Everdeen came in, who was the heroine of Hunger Games. You know, they're asking, uh, you know, all these Folks, what would they do? Who's the guy with the with the big fro who did the fast paintings? He became a big thing. Oh yeah, I run an article oh, about uh, it. Ross. Ross. Ross yeah. Ross. They were asking Ross. Yeah. Getting coached by Ross. Oh, uh, right. so real people that were iconic, but also by you know by pretend characters. Uh, you you know you you can be coached by the characters of uh, of, of South Park. I mean. <laughs> Well, my boy story. Uh, oh, yeah. Great and so, uh, you know, Larry, Larry and you could go on and on and on with this, but we have to go make money now. So we're going to wrap this up. This is absolutely fantastic. I do want to have you uh, come to the to to uh, our company and talk about this so you can get a lot of uh, people on on your app immediately because it, it really is great. And uh, and I think we could we could do this again and again. So as you create in these new 2.0 and all the other ones that you're going to be creating, we want to be the first to uh, to talk about it. It's my pleasure. And you are the first. I saved the very first launch interview for my buddies at Manifaz. And so it's all you. And why don't you uh, after you get off this call, go to go to Omni Coach and ask. Tell them who you are. Tell them about menopause and ask how can we most how can we uh, uh, monetize uh, our company most effectively, and how can we get this last thirty five minutes of our lives back? Would you? <laughs> <laughs> but you know, if you want if you want more information on Mark, by the way, you can he has other videos on our website menopause.com, or you can just go directly to his site, which is the limitlesscoach.com and uh, there's there's way more information there uh, not only about omni coach but all the other endeavors uh, and and things that uh, that mark does so yeah thanks so much mark this is this is groundbreaking stuff and yeah, yeah. i'm sure we'll have you back as this kind of grows and matures and 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 evolves and again you know at least from from this point of view people should not be afraid of this ai technology because this is these are these are the good ones, and so the, this is stuff where you can actually you know benefit from uh, by using it. So thanks again, Mark, for being with us. I Thanks, love Mark, with you guys. My pleasure. Have All right, Namaste. Nice. <laughs> bye bye.